That was the quickest I've ever dismantled a pallet because it was really wet because it's been raining the last few days and it comes apart so much easier when the wood is like soaked through. I'm gonna do another one. So I'm just making the last of the cabinet doors for the set of cabinets that I'm doing at the moment in the kitchen. I'm having a bit of a issue with them though because I'm not sure how to actually fix them in place. So I know I wanted them to look kind of like this picture set into the concrete around them but the reality of actually getting the concrete like in the right place so that the door sits in it nicely was a lot harder than I had anticipated. I did a bit of a trial with one door and I propped the door up against the area where it needed to be and then kind of tried to cement around it but it was super messy and just really hard and fiddly to get the concrete all in the right places. So I'm gonna try a different approach now. I'm gonna make all the doors and I'm going to attach just these brackets to the place where I think they need to be. Then I'm gonna temporarily hang the doors and then with the doors all in place, I think it'll be easier to get the cement around them um, so that they sort of sit nicely in a border of cement. Not sure if I've explained that very well, but hopefully the picture of what I'm aiming for helps. I'm starting to think now that this is maybe the worst possible way I could have come up with to try and put these doors on these cabinets. Um, but I also can't think of another way, so we'll see how this goes. So what I'm doing here is basically what I explained. I'm adding a bit of cement to the front of the cabinet so that I can fix the hinges into that bit of cement and then attach the doors. So this idea with the cabinet doors didn't really work. Um, the cement has dried now, but in some of them it's cracked. This one has, the raw plugs have completely come out of the cement. 
It's a little dark, but as you can see, they just came right out. The reason for this is because as cement dries, it kind of contracts and it pulls away from the roll plug so they're not safely and securely in. It's obvious when you think about it, but uh, that's a mistake that I made. I feel like the same thing is going to happen with some of the other ones as well. There's also cracking and it's just messy, it's not neat. In some places it's kind of okay, I could probably kind of get it to work, but I've actually realised what I should have done, what would have been a much better way of doing this. So I'm going to show you that later on, we'll come back to that later in this video, but for now I'm going to go and do something else. Meanwhile, I was also working on sealing around all of the roof tiles in the ceiling. This is honestly the hardest job. It's so slow. It looks like nothing, but it's really hard because it's just really hard to like squeeze this thing. It's really stiff and you're holding it above you and it's just so slow and you're just going like millimetre by millimetre and it's just taking absolutely forever and it's also hard work, I can't do that much at a time before I need to like rest because it's hard on your arms Oh, I thought this would be like a really nice little job but it's the worst job I realised that part of the reason it was so hard to use the roof sealant was because it was cold so I waited until a sunny day and left the bottles in the sun to warm up, which actually helped a lot and I was able to make a lot more progress. Meanwhile, now that I'd shuffled things around and cleared another corner of the kitchen, it was finally time to start on the brickwork for the second set of cabinets. I got to yesterday the cabinets are starting to take shape this is the oven here which I've had to put out of the way everything's a bit of a mess in the kitchen we're not going to keep this oven um, I think it's reached the end of its lifespan it was second hand to us and although the hobs work okay the oven part isn't great um, the grill doesn't work so I think we're going to take it to the recycling center and we want for ourselves anyway not a big gas oven but a big wood oven so we've got our eye on the one that we want and we've got the space kind of marked out for it so we'll be getting rid of this oven and installing a wood burning one. Today I was going to carry on just putting the surfaces on here and building it up but I've just realized that what I forgot to do which I did last time which worked quite well was plaster the wall behind like underneath before doing the shelves because it's kind of awkward to get in there once you've got the shelves and the top on. So before I go any further I'm going to do that and I think I'm going to just basically plaster the back of this whole wall and the back of the inside of the shelves. So we do have this pipe here going along this wall. This comes down from the terrace which is just above on the other side of the wall and uh, annoyingly it kind of goes this way and crosses the whole side of the kitchen. It can't actually go the other way because up until about here on the other side of this wall is actually like the ground. We're kind of slightly dug into the ground here so it, it can't come out the other way. I did think I could just kind of turn it round and angle it out the other way so it didn't take up so much space. But I can't so it's stuck here and uh, I think what I'm going to do is put a shelf above it. I don't have that shelf yet but that's my plan, put a shelf above it and some hooks on the bottom of the shelf to hang things on so that I can kind of hang things in front of the pipe to kind of hide it a little bit and I think that way it won't look so bad. If you've got any ideas of what I can do with this pipe, um, how to hide it or any clever thoughts, let me know because uh, I'm not doing this just yet so there's time to change my mind. Where 
Where's my mask gone? I hung it right here on the wheelbarrow handle. Una? Una? Where is it? What have you done with it? reaching at this point once we've got the countertops on here I can stand on those and reach the last final bits that I can't quite get to and now I'm just working on the inside of the cabinets the really awkward bits it is extremely awkward I definitely should have plastered the back wall of this before I put the little shelf thing on and then once I've done that I will leave it for a few hours and then come back and give it a wet sponge over everything to Smooth it all out. I burned out like a wandering ember. I shone bright, then my journey was over. What I sought when I ran. Was back where I began No matter the rain No matter the storm I'm coming home I'm coming home Leave open the gate Don't turn off the light I'm I gained all that I knew for a price In the end, what I found was nowhere near as nice No matter the rain, no matter the storm I'm coming on, I'm coming on Leave open the gate, don't turn off the light So we've got a very fun job today. I bought these really nice chocolatey coloured glossy tiles with the aim of laying them on the windowsill in Mauro's office to make it look a little bit nicer. The window itself is not that nice but I thought maybe by picking out the brown colour and um, tiling the windowsill in a similar colour it would make it look a bit better. But for some reason this box is enormous. I think it's more than I actually ordered but I didn't realise. Um, so I've got loads and we're actually going to tile some other places as well. We've got lots of little corners and shelves and things which I just think would look nicer with some tiles on them. So we're going to do that. I did have a better sponge than this, but I hid it from Una and I seem to have also hidden it from myself, so I'm not sure where it is.
tiling done. I think it looks really nice. Now I've painted around the edges and tidied it all up. We've still got quite a few tiles left, so I guess I'll see if I can find anywhere else to tile, but for now, I think it's done. I know lots of people have asked to see the full office rebuild renovation. Um, this is literally one of the last things that I wanted to do, so it's almost done. It might even be the next video that I will show you the whole process, which started back in November, I think, now. So that is coming very soon. Um, I haven't forgotten about it, but yeah, that's one more thing done. Okay, here we are again. It's been a while since I've been working on the kitchen. I've been away and I've been working on other things. It's probably been a couple of weeks since I did these bits of the cabinets. Today I'm going to finish putting the top bit on them and cementing over the shelf area. So I made a mistake in this part, I forgot that I, I plastered the wall and I forgot that I needed to put a little shelf for the top of the cabinet to rest on. So we've fixed that now, I've got my friend John here helping me. <laughs> look at how, look at how neat his brickwork is compared to mine. Ah, uh, this is embarrassing. So we have a few gaps in between some of these planks because the wall is not straight so it's sort of, some of these planks have had to lie at a slight diagonal but I've put some uh, mosquito netting just in between the gaps which acts as a kind of mesh and then I can just cement over the top. We're going to have the same issue on the top here as well so just using this stuff. So this is where we got to yesterday with John's help. I'm really glad that we got this corner set of cabinets, the structure built. I really wanted to get to this point because I wanted to try another door experiment over in this corner. I wanted to build the structure as neatly and as well as I could and then take just one section and try and build my new version of the cabinet doors here and do like one perfect door. The doors didn't work before when I was trying to build like the frame with cement and put the roll plugs directly in the cement. What I realised that I clearly should have done is build a frame of wood and set the wood in the cement. So that's what we're going to try and do over here. I've got this wooden frame that I'm going to put on this section 
I'm going to attach it onto the brick and the cement work and any little gaps can be filled in with plaster later on so it should look like a nice neat frame and then the door goes on the frame it's obviously much easier to screw into the wood it'll form a nice clearly square frame for the door to go in and when I look at the picture that I was actually following in the first place They've actually got wood in it, which I just didn't <laughs> recognise before, so that's obviously the way to do things. So I'm hoping this is going to work a lot better, and if I can get one example door done of how I want it to be, then I can extrapolate to the rest and try and fix the mess over there. exciting day the tiles have arrived for the countertops so they're these sage green tiles sage green is kind of the color I'm trying to go for for like any accent colors in the kitchen we got these tiles from a local company based in River Salvers which is really close to here which is really nice I think they look really good what we're gonna do is just lay them out on the countertop and cut down any that need to be cut to size I'm only going to tile the bit of the countertop that I'm working on and this little corner just so that I can see how the whole finished door cabinet situation is going to look with the tiles and everything as well. So I don't have a proper tile cutter they're very expensive and I didn't want to buy one so uh, we're making do with what we have which is just scoring it with a Stanley knife and uh, cutting it with an angle grinder it leaves not a perfect edge I would probably try and sand it down if it wasn't for the fact that these pieces are going to go against the back of the wall and then there's going to be a splashback like coming to meet it so it will be covered up by the width of the tile of the splashback I hope so I'm going to leave it like this
So that is it, that's one cabinet door, um, one cabinet basically done. I think we can all appreciate that version 2 of these cabinets are looking a lot better than version 1. I learned a lot by doing it all over again and figuring out what I had done wrong. Um, so I'm pretty happy with how it's turned out. There's a few things left to do, I need to plaster around some of the edges just to fill in a few gaps that we've got. Um, I think I'll also stain the wood and um, I need to add handles and add the little magnet latch thing and a few things like that but none of that is anything that I feel like I need to test out so this is where I wanted to get to and I'm pretty happy. It's been a tough few weeks working in the kitchen, not that I've been here the whole time but um, it's taken me a long time to just get to the point where I've got one decent door and I kind of know what I'm doing but by making mistakes you learn and by doing it all over again I've definitely yeah learned a lot and I'm happy now that I know where I'm going with this a little bit more. But anyway, yeah, I'm happy to leave it here for this week and this video. Um, I hope you've enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next one.